Sometimes it can be funny what the effect of one word or phrase can have on your experience. And what I'm talking about really is customs. A few years ago, I had a large shipment of Starfleet Battles material held in customs for over a week while they wanted to charge me an import duty for that that's applied to video games. They didn't really know what it was, but they kept seeing the description game and weren't really able to move forward with what other kind of game it could be other than a video game. And it actually took a trip to the central post office to clear that one up. Now in this case, I ordered from Cubicle 7, and I want to say right from the very beginning that Cubicle 7 has been awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really fault them for what happened. However, the description of the material that I ordered was listed as graphic novels. Now what I ordered, of course, was role-playing game books. So the safe description would be books. But what's really the difference, or what could possibly be the difference between a graphic novel and just a book? Well, the difference is actually a month sitting in customs. So this package was actually ordered on the 1st of December. It's now the 7th of January. And it arrived in Korea long, long ago. And it sat in customs without anybody doing anything until I decided that, you know, definitely the package was due. I contacted Cubicle 7. They immediately got back to me with, with tracking numbers and contact information. I got a hold of the courier company, and then they said, oh, well, yeah, we've had it here. After I dealt with the held in customs issue, it then took an additional four days for this to be delivered to me. So right now, the courier... TNT is not my favorite career company in the world. Now the box has been opened by customs and then taped up so I can't really comment on the packing so there, there won't be too many uh, comments about the, uh, the way the, the product has been put into the box. But uh, it was nicely put back together by customs which is a nice change. Inside the box, peanuts! and bubble wrap, which is an excellent combination. I'm starting to feel better already. Well bubble wrapped they they were. So I've got them open now, and what I've ordered here uh, are two different game lines. One's a bundle, and one's just the core book. And you can imagine uh, what they are. Did you guess Doctor Who? Uh -uh. This gorgeous product is what I ordered. and. Truly, that's a stunning cover. I'm not going to open it just yet. We'll go on to the next piece. Part of the same bundle was the Game Master's screen. All right. Hard as they are now. <laughs> next is the Legends book and the Art of War supplement. This bundle also included the Bestiary, but it was not available at the time that the bundle shipped, so it will be coming in a later uh, shipment in a week or so. And the last is Yggdrasil, which I've had in PDF for a while, and uh, I liked it enough that I wanted a hardcover version of it. And seeing these books like this now, it has me thinking that I may, when the, the trilogy that uh, is stemming from Kuro is further developed, I'll probably be going for those core books as well. These really are lovely. As you can see, looking inside, there are cultural and thematic elements reinforced throughout. They're, they are very readable due to the, the sepia tone, clear text, and just little touches that take this from being merely technical writing into that wonderful and evocative world of imaginative art. So, although I had to wait a ridiculous amount of time while nobody from the courier company 
contacted me or Cubicle 7 to let us know that there was a problem getting the shipment through customs and we had to track them down ourselves weeks later. It is a great pleasure to finally receive these books and I look forward to running them. Continuing on with my story of customs, <laughs> this package, as you can see from FedEx, was uh, delivered to me today and it was sent on Thursday of last week. And this is a delivery from Q Workshop, you know, the dice makers. And what's listed as being in the package is not something risque or possibly dangerous like graphic novel. No, what's inside is the word dice. But, thanking you for your cooperation, this also was stopped by customs. Why? Why not? Now, unlike the situation with TNT, who simply did nothing until prompted and pushed, FedEx dealt with customs themselves, didn't bother me at all, didn't cause a delay, and got my product to me early. Once again, we cannot fault Korean customs for their willingness to use tape to seal up what they've done. Although I have another story, which I'll tell another time. <laughs> okay, so... Inside, something from Q Workshop, I ordered the standard dice for Arkham Horror to go with my recent acquisition of that game. So these aren't the blessed and cursed dice, these are just the standard dice. Let's take a look. So peeling through all the layers of mystery, we see three different sets licensed from Fantasy Flight. And it always seems to be, no matter how you work it out, you'll need at least three sets of dice for any Fantasy Flight game. So clearly they've had a rough right and been handled by customs. It looks like one's missing, but it's not. It's just a slit underneath. So I'll take these out when I'm not at work. So here are the dice. They're numbered normally, although artistically, from one through four. And then the successes are marked by the classic Chaosium Elder sign. Four, five, and six. So one, two, three, four not a success. Five and six is a success, so it's easy to see on the dice. You don't have to recognize what a five or a six might mean. Now the blessed and cursed dice, which are in the mail, are different colors, blue and red, and have a different distribution of what a success is and what a failure is. And when they arrive, we'll look at those two, just because. This package is from FRP Games, and we know that we can expect a well-packed shipment here. And this is expanding my customization of Arkham Horror, but also contributing to my X-Wing collection. So inside, nicely wrapped up in brown paper, we find the elusive blessed dice for Arkham Horror and the almost as elusive cursed dice. I've only managed to get one set of each, and I understand from looking at the statistics that I will need more, but at least this is a little bit of fun for now. Also, it is, man, it was so difficult to actually get someone to send me the expansion for X-Wing, an X-Wing expansion. So here's one, and I have another one coming, so that will be nice. So these are the blessed and cursed dice for Arkham Horror. Blessed. Cursed. And as you can see, the distribution of dice is, or the distribution of successes on the dice, is different than for the standard Arkham Horror dice. For Arkham Horror, you get a success on a 5 or a 6 in, an, in normal conditions. But when you are blessed, this extends successes to a 4. You can see the 6 uh, there. But when you're cursed, only a 6 is a success. So 1 through 5 is failure, and then 6 is the success. So, you know, while it's not difficult to know that a 4 or better is a success, or only a 6 is a success, or 5 or better is a success, it is kind of nice to be able to switch uh, to a different and easily read set of dice. Now, there are, online you can read some complaints about the quality of the faces of the dice. Um, these ones are consistent, so I cannot say that uh, those complaints 
hold true in my experience, but this is just two sets of five dice with all the dice in the world. Who can say? So for now, at any rate, this ends my story of, or my tale of woe, with customs and international shipping. It's not always sunshine, roses, and cool packages.